verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercies and just forever. Hallelujah. Now, say after me, say, Lord, we bring our offering of praise and thanksgiving to you for your goodness and mercy towards us. We thank you for the many blessings. I can't hear you. We thank you for the many blessings, victories we have experienced. To you and you alone be the praise. Lift your voice to God with thanksgiving this morning. I'm beginning to give God praise from the depth of your heart. Father, I will thank you. The Lord will bring our offering of praise and thanksgiving to you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy towards us. We thank you for the many blessings, the victories and miracles we have experienced. Lord, to you and you alone be the praise. To you and you alone be the praise. Somebody lift your voice to God in gratitude and thanksgiving this morning. Appreciate his goodness. Lord, we have come back to say thank you. We have come back to say thank you. Lord, we have come back to say thank you. Lord Jesus, we have come back to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings, for the many victories, for the many miracles we have experienced thus far. Lord, to you and you alone be the praise. To you and you alone be the glory. To you and you alone be the glory. Somebody lift your voice, lift your hands, giving God thanks for his goodness, for his mercy, so God. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Shepherd, let them go for Hamad and Abaya. Abando Soko Kambra Lidabaya. Epatoska Pari and Abakaba. If a Tosha, Lepata Brava Lagabaya. And the Soka Frapala Banda. Erente Kobaya Lagabaya. Somebody give God thanks. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God your thanks. Somebody give God your own praise. Lord, we give you all the praise. It is your doing, oh God. It is marvelous in our sight. Lord, we give you the praise. And we give you a shout. 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 We give you a shout, Jesus. We give you a shout, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Hallelujah. Petra Lagos, can you shout? How many of you are experiencing the overflowing already? Hallelujah. Amen. We're 
are declaring the overflow this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, fancy your hands like this. Let your hands go like this.
all around Everywhere Look your love is All around You see this in here
you're excited to be in the house, can I hear you thunder and shout this morning? Give Jesus and raise your voice and bless the name of the Lord this morning. God has been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is excited to be in God's house this morning? You know God's mercy has been speaking for you. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, we bless you. We bless you, Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, but God, turn to your neighbor and say, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. If you know God has been merciful to you, can I see your hand? It's not by your will, by your strength, by your power, by your faith, but his mercy. So we're going to open our mouths this morning to pray. We will say, Father, Father, as your word comes to me today, I declare that I receive more revelation of your mercy. Father, as your word comes to me today, I declare that I receive more revelation of your mercy. I declare that by reason of this service, my life is a testament of your overwhelming mercy. I declare by the reason of this service, my life is a testament of your overwhelming mercy. Men see me and they wonder at the riches of your mercy towards me. I'll be ready to pray. Let's open our mouths and thunder this morning. Declare and open your mouth and say, Father, we declare that we receive more revelation of your mercy. We declare by the reason of this service, my life is a testament of your overwhelming mercy. Open your mouth and begin to thunder. Men will see me and they wonder at the riches of your mercy towards me. In the name of Jesus, your mercy speaks. Your mercy speaks. Your mercy speaks. Men see me and all they see is your mercy. Men see me and all they see is your mercy. The mercy, the overwhelming mercy. God is rich in mercy. Thank you, Jesus. We declare the de Prado Sunday We receive more revelation of your mercy. We receive more revelation of your mercy towards us. We receive more revelation of your mercy towards us. In the name of Jesus. This service will open our eyes, open our ears. There is a revelation of your mercy that puts us forward, that plunges us into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, there is overwhelming mercy. Thank you to Jesus. As your word comes this morning, Lord, new light into your mercy, new revelations into your mercy. We walk in the consciousness of your mercy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. And in Jesus' name we pray. May you kindly please be seated for the service. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. God has been um, awesome in this house and um, we are immensely grateful. Hallelujah. 
we've been taught that no act of God is ordinary, right? And we are deeply impressed by the smallest of his act. Hallelujah. So we are here to give God the glory for things that he has done in this house. We have a testimony here from Brother F. Ho. He said, I've returned to give God all the glory for his wisdom at work in my life. He said, this month I received a call from a UK client referred by a colleague to complete a project requiring a tool I was unfamiliar with. Despite reaching out to friends with expertise in that field, none were able to, none were familiar with the specific tool. Initially, I considered declining the project, but God's servant, Pastor Ayos, um, teaching on wisdom during the 21 day prayer and fasting came to mind. Hallelujah. He said, he emphasized wisdom for problem solving, creativity, and breakthrough ideas. Do you remember that? Then he said, inspired. See, I, I decided to take on the challenge and learn the tool. He said, within two days, I mastered it and completed the project in three days. The client was impressed by my level of excellence and has since offered me more projects. To God be the glory. This is truly the year that wisdom built. Petra, is that how you give God praise? It is the year that wisdom built. Hallelujah. Sister Isis said, praise God. I have returned to thank God for his mercies in my life. She said, sometime last year, I suffered from severe anxiety disorder. I was vomiting after each meal for over six weeks. After running a series of tests, I was referred to see a psychiatrist. And that was when it was discovered that I had severe anxiety disorder. I was placed on antidepressant to help with the panic attack. On my birthday, I prayed for healing and stopped taking the medication by faith. It has been over four months and I haven't had any anxiety attack since then. God healed me completely. Hallelujah. She said, secondly, I work remotely for a company in the UK. Recently, I noticed that they started sidelining me from project. Being the only African in, in the company, I would have most of my projects reassigned to either the British or Indian project manager. I prayed for a new job and I didn't want to have any anxiety attack again because of the issue. During the first Sunday of the Mercy series, that was two weeks ago now, I pray that God will show me, show me mercy and give me a testimony. He said last week, sorry, last week a recruiter came from a company in Netherlands reaching out to me via LinkedIn for a project manager job. They needed to fill ASAP. In two days, I got interviewed and I resumed immediately. I have come back to give thanks to God for all he has done for me and showing me mercy. This is our month of mercy, hallelujah. And God has been good to us. I think you should jump up and give God a shout. Give God thanks from the depth of your heart for his mighty things he had done for us in the house of Petra. Lord, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Indeed, it's our month of mercy. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Okay, so I just want you to take a moment and just reflect on the goodness of God this morning. Before we start singing, I just want you to think about the goodness of God upon your life. And now you, you, can, you can express your love to God. Just express your love to God. Tell Him how good He is, how beautiful He is, how kind He has been to you. How merciful he has been. Just open your mouth and begin to speak in other tongues right now. Lord, we love you, Lord. We love you. And I've heard thousand stories of what they
pleasing that I'm never alone. Your good, good Father is who you are. Is who you are. Who you are. Is who you are. Who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Your good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am.
give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise and thank him. Give him praise and thank him. With a loud voice, come on, go ahead and pray in the spirit. Give him praise and thank him. Love on him, thank him, worship him. Give him praise, 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 give him praise. Give him praise. Father, thank you. Baratilos, Keira, Antradilo, Boko Shabahai. Close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven. Bless him, worship him, adore him, glorify him. He's a good God, he's a good, good, good God. Bless him, worship him, bless him, worship him. Bless him, worship him, bless him, worship him. Jesus, we thank you. Glory to your holy name, glory to your holy name, Jesus. Glory to your holy name, Jesus. Glory to your holy name, Jesus. Come on, bless him, come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Worship him, adore him. Blessed be his holy name. Seramato freti gashaka paya develo ko barahate shale ge bakora pitilia tenango skora pasha ne ge baba baba shela bara bado ko sora pata la baba 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 paya shale vetele veka soka prapa ronda bada bahaya Jesus thank you thank you thank you thank you. Le rosa mene vele ki goskera atratilo kom ze barabata shalaya. We give you glory, we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. Now for the next one minute, I want you to pray. Lord, grant me an encounter this morning. Grant me an encounter with your word. Grant me an encounter in the spirit this morning. If you came here to receive from the Lord, to hear from the Lord for yourself, I want you to pray, Lord, grant me an encounter. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me in the way that only you can. Speak to me, Lord, in the way that only you can. Speak to me, Lord, in the way that only you can. Speak to me, Lord, in the way that only you can. Speak to me, Lord, in the way that only you can. Let there be encounters this morning. Let there be encounters this morning. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. We give you the praise and we bless you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for encounters in the word. Thank you for encounters with your spirit. Thank you for life change. Thank you for revelation knowledge. Thank you for truth. Thank you for light. Thank you, Lord. Our hearts and our minds are open unto you. Thank you for all that you have for us, both seen and unseen, both expected and unexpected. We receive it all by faith today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we decree and we declare our lives will never remain the same. Father, we decree and we declare the man that entered into this place is not the man living. The lady that entered into this hall is not the lady living. Nobody comes around your word and remains the same. Nobody comes around your word and remains the same. Nobody comes around your word and remains the same. We decree change by your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. And all God's people said a big amen. Now, I want you to do something. Look at the person beside you and give them a warm smile. Tell them you look good, you look great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ask the person, are you glad you're in church this morning? Are you ready for an encounter in the Word this morning? Tell the person, this is your month. The month of March. 
where the mercy of God became your overwhelming advantage. Come on, say it one more time. This is your month. The month of March. Where the mercy of God became your overwhelming advantage. Rewriting your story. Now, how many of you believe that? This is your month, the month of March, where the mercy of God became your overwhelming advantage. First Thessalonians chapter 2, still standing. I want you to see, thank you, gentlemen. I want you to see something. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Stay. Verse 13, verse 12. We take it from verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 12. Glory to God. It says that you will work worthy of God. It says who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. Say this with me. He's called me unto his kingdom and glory. Now that's a very powerful statement. He's called me unto his kingdom and glory. This is the calling that we have on our lives. Um, it's not a calling to suffer. It's not a calling to manage. It's a calling unto what? His kingdom and glory. Now, but when you read that first portion of the scripture there, it says that you walk worthy of God. Many times all we're thinking of is in terms of the moral aspect. And that's beautiful. That's important. That's included. But it's far more than that. It's far more than that. Have you seen somebody before... And when they introduced themselves to you and they said, I'm the son of such and such, you said to yourself, how on earth, how on earth can this person be the son of this person? Because they don't look like it, they don't act like it, they don't talk like it, they don't dress like it. They are not walking worthy of their pedigree. Now he says that you work worthy of who? Of God who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. Now look at verse 13 there. And I want us all to read this together. I want to go. For this cause. Hold on. This is the reason for the teaching ministry. Since this is the reason. We want you to work worthy of God. Worthy of all that he died for on the cross for you. He says for this cause. Everybody want to go. Also thank we God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God, beautiful, go on. I want you to read it again. Why is Paul giving God praise? Verse 13, want to go. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Can we see verse 13 in the Amplified, amplified Version? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 there. You see, because you have to have the right attitude to God's word. You have to have the right attitude to God's word. It is the word of God that delivers your portion to you, delivers God's counsel, God's mind to you. Now look at what he says. Can we all read together? One to go. We also thank God continually for this, that when you receive the word of God concerning salvation, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God, which effect at work in you who believe exercising its inherent, hold on, hold on, so the inherent, there's inherent power in the word, there's inherent power in the word, it says exercising its inherent supernatural power in those of faith, can we read this in the Amplified Classic please, Amplified Classic, I want you to see it in the Amplified, do we have the Amplified Classic, Mr. DJ, uh, I know you're standing, it's fine, Okay, can we read the last portion there? Want to go, which is effectually at work in you who believe exercising its superhuman power. That's what I wanted you to see. Show me inherent, superhuman. Show me the word of God has inherent and superhuman power. You believe that? 
So the teaching ministry is an extension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit does is he brings us light concerning that which is our sound. Can I come down, Mr. Sound? Is it okay to come down? Sound man, is it okay to come down? Glory to God. All right. You may be seated. The Holy Spirit has a cardinal assignment in the last days, in the end time. He has a cardinal assignment, one assignment. Now, he may feel you and get you talking in other tongues, and that's beautiful. He may tickle you <laughs> and get you laughing. That's wonderful. He may stun you with power, and you fall flat out under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's beautiful. But the primary assignment of the Holy Spirit to the believer is to teach, to show, and to guide. Say with me, to teach, to show, and to guide. Come and say again with me, to teach, to show, and to guide. And you know why that's the case? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12 makes a very important assertion. Paul makes an assertion there. He says, we have not received the spirit which is of the world, but we have received the spirit which is of God. And the essence of having received the spirit which is of God is that we might know. That we might know. Now, so, if you have received the spirit which is of God, and um, you're laughing in the Holy Ghost, you're falling out in, under the power, um, you're speaking in other tongues, and all of those wonderful expressions of the charismata, as great as that is, you haven't experienced the best of the Spirit. The best of the Holy Ghost is so that we might know. So me, that we might know, that we might know. Why? Because knowledge is possession. In the kingdom of God, knowledge is possession. Knowledge is possession. Now, everybody look at me. God is not trying to give you anything. It's important that you know this. God is not trying to give you anything. God, give me a husband. God, give me a wife. Oh, God, give me a job. Oh, God, give me this. Oh, God, give me that. Say with me, the works are finished. And God is rested. <laughs> Glory to God. God is not trying to give you anything. God is not trying to give you a car. I know many of us don't like that. You're really hoping that God really wants to give you a car because you really need a car. Am I speaking somebody's heart here? Um, this Lagos, um, <laughs> you're like, dear Lord Jesus, can you help me with this? I, I truly need a car. I truly need a house. I tr okay, it would take two of you to carry this thing. This must be so heavy. Wow. Put your hands together for them. And they're wonderful. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I would have thought this was going to weigh like a thousand kilograms. Okay. So, um, you're truly desirous that God wants to give you something? No. Absolutely not. That's not what he does. God does not give. God shows. There's a difference. God does not give, God shows. God does not give, God shows. Now, I understand that we all are at different levels of spiritual maturity. And um, for a babe, a babe wants to be given, but as you mature, they stop giving you, they start showing you. How many of you understand what I'm saying here? How many of you ever had a child and then, um, I can see Rema, good to see you. I can see a few of my Abuja people here. Uh, good to see you guys. Please go back. <laughs> Thank you. Fala, good to see you. All right. Um, Rema has some um, two wonderful kids there. And I can imagine um, one of them screaming, Wah! what do you do immediately? She goes to prepare. You know all those stuff they prepare? I wonder how they remember how the portions, two to three to one to ten, and I never got it once. Praise God. Thank God that's not a criteria for success in life. All right, so, um, and she prepares it. Now, the boy is five years of age or seven years of age. Like, I have a, a, my, my son 10 years now, 
And then he comes to me and he says, Daddy, I want to eat. I want to snack. You think I'm going to get up to give him something? Absolutely not. I'll slap him. I'll tell him where it is. Go to the fridge. Get yourself something to snack on. Why? Because at a stage, it is beautiful to give the child something. But as you mature, it is wrong to give. No, it is wrong to give. As you mature, you are instructed to do. You are shown. I, I, is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Now, so he says that the Holy Spirit, put that scripture back there, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. We are going to have a Bible seminar this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. It says, now we have received not the spirit which is of the world. Observe, it says, we have received. We are not trying to receive. We have received not the spirit which is of the world. So there is the spirit which is of the world. And it says, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given. Not that he will give. Say with me, freely given. He's already given them. He's not going to give them. He's already given them. This is important. He says they are freely given already. And observe the tense. Somebody said, note the tense of the word and you never get into error. And I agree. Observe the tenses. He says he's given them to us. So we don't have to try to get them. No. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to show them, to reveal them. In essence, when you come into a meeting like this and the word of God is being taught, what is happening is that you're being shown what is already yours. Revelation comes to you, light comes to you. And to the end, that the moment your eyes can behold the truth, it becomes your present tense reality and experience in your life. Romans, the fourth chapter. I'd like to show you something there. Romans chapter four. Now, I don't know who came here hungry, but um, this has nothing to do with what I wanted to say. And I, I learned from Brother Higgin that um, sometimes the side teaching and story is the main story. <laughs> Praise God. I'd like us to read from verse um, 16, Romans chapter 4, verse 16. God is doing a work in your life. He's writing a beautiful story with your life. You are the epistle they will read. And when they judge your life, they will say, this is the goodness and the mercy of God. Amen. Do you believe it? Yes, mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. And when God wants to change your life, he brings you his word. That's what he does. Look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 16 there. It says, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. I like that. He says, it is of faith, not of works, that it might be by grace, or simply receiving what he's done. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Say with me, all the seed. All the seed. None is excluded. Now, observe, he didn't say all the seeds. If you study Galatians chapter 3, you understand what this means. Paul explains fully. He says, not all the seeds. He says, the seed, which is Christ. And he says that if you're of faith, it says, then are ye Abraham's seed. Now, I want you to observe, and we don't have the time. The focus of Paul in Romans, the fourth chapter, and Galatians, the third chapter, was to show us that you are the seed. He never says we are seeds. We're the ones who think that way. We are the seeds of Abraham. Paul never said that. No. He said, you are the seed. Always, he puts it in the singular. You know why? You know why he puts it that way? Now, do you think you'll be wrong, Eunice, if he said to you, if he said, please sit down, thank you. If he said, everybody in church is the seed, we all are the seeds of Abraham. Do you think that will be wrong? No, that's right. That's correct. There's nothing wrong theologically with that. But you miss out on the point he's trying to communicate. Every time he turns your eyes away from the seeds to the seed. Okay, read this again. One more time. One to go. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Now, you'll agree with me that that's poor communication. It should be all the seeds. If you say all, then it should be plural. Why does he say to all the seed? Why does he, use, why, why does he speak that way? Galatians 3. 
Galatians chapter 3. Mm. Whoever you are, you must be strong. Because <laughs> I'm trying to get into my notes and you are pulling me away from my notes. But I believe the Lord has something to say to someone here today. Okay, Galatians chapter 3, verse, um, let's, let's, let's see where we start from there. Verse 13 talks about, you know, on and on, Christ has redeemed us from the cross of the law down to verse, all right, so we can take it from verse 16 so we don't um, delay. He says, now to Abraham and his, come and talk to me, his what? Seed, where the promise is made, he seeth not, and to seeds as of many. Do you see, he's trying to disabuse you, disabuse your mind from the concept of seeds. If it wasn't clear in Romans 4, it's clear now in Galatians 3. He's trying to disabuse your mind. He says, as seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So somebody says, okay, that, that makes sense. He's talking about Christ. Okay, now go down to verse 26. 26, oh, just so we don't delay, oh, we could read it just to give context. For you all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Everybody read verse 29, want to go. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, not seeds. Powerful. What is he trying to get across to us? If you said seeds, then it means all that the Father has has to be distributed across the seeds. But if you said seed, it means all the Father has belongs to the seed. Yes, sir. Our inheritance is not a division. Yes, You've got to understand this. It's not God dividing what he has amongst all his children. He is to you God in his fullness as though he was not God to another. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? He says to his seed. When I tell people I can never be broke in my life, I can never fail, I can never be down, I don't have blue days, I'm never sad. They think you're talking, he's just trying to be smart and all the rest. No, these are the things we've discovered. How can the seed of God be sad? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you still here? Now, all of that was a digression from the digression. So let's go back to the digression. Romans 4. <laughs> all right, Romans 4. Let's go back to, because uh, I just wanted you to see that. Um, said this, I am the seed of Abraham. Come and say it again. I am the seed of Abraham. You believe it? Mm. It says in verse 16. Now back to verse 16. I, I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so let's get back there. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. Now you get it, right? Beautiful. Okay. It says, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the fate of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And can we read verse 17 together? One to go. As it is written, I have made thee. Just a second. Observe what he said. Not I will give you. Not I will. He says, I have made, will, I have made thee. In that while he was yet barren, God said, I have made thee. God is not trying to give you anything. He's made you already. He says, I have made thee a father of... Now, you've got to understand this here. I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead, called those things which be not as though they were. Look at the next verse there, verse 18, quickly. Romans 4, 18. Now, everybody read, want to go. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become? Observe, observe, observe the previous, previous verse. I have made you, but by his faith he became... So faith is not trying to get you something you don't have. Faith is giving expression to what you are, to what you already have. This is important. And I think this is a major missing link in the faith practice of a lot of believers. 
We're trying to get something. Use our faith to get something. We're trying to use our faith to become rich. We're trying to use our faith to become wealthy. Uh -uh. The Bible says that this is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even though he was poor, rich yet was made poor, that I through his poverty might be made what? Rich. So I am rich even if I don't have the money in my pocket. Observe this. He has made me and by my faith I become. He has made me. My faith does not make me. He has made me. My faith gives expression. All right, someone says, can you, can you show us from scriptures? Oh, yes. Everybody look at me here. What made you a king in Old Testament Israel? Talk to me. What made you a king? The crown? No. Come on, talk to me. Sitting on the throne? No. What made you a king in Old Testament Israel? The oil of the prophet. The moment the oil came upon your head, you became king of the nation. Can I ask you a question? Was it immediately the oil came upon David's head, he ascended the throne? When did he become king? Now talk to me. When did David become king over Israel? When he ascended the throne or when the oil was poured? Come on, talk to me. When did David become king? Was it when he had a crown on his head? Was it when he had subjects all around him? When did he become king? The moment the oil was poured on his head, he became the king. Now, can I ask you a question? If you looked around him, did he look like a king? No. The oil came on his head. He continued with the sheep like shepherd. Nothing changed on the outside. He has made you, but we're becoming. And glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That's why you're never sad for where you are in your life. Never. I'm never sad. I've never needed encouragement. No. He has made me. I am becoming. Mm. I know you don't have money in your pocket right now. But he was made poor that you might be made rich. And that ye through his poverty. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? He's made all grace, not some grace, all grace. My goodness, my goodness, I just want to do a dance. Glory to God. My, 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 my. How do you hear these kind of things and remain calm? Some of you are just like, mm. Mm. How do you hear this and remain calm? You should be jumping, you should be shouting, you should be screaming. Glory to God. My, 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 my. <laughs> Sit down for a bit. You, you know, you know I, I, I made a vow as a young man. I said, nothing else will command my emotions more than the word of God. Some of you, when you're watching football, you're almost breaking the TV. Hmm. You can't even slap the person beside you because he said something against your team. But when it comes to hearing the word of God, hmm. Hmm. Ah. Oh, deep. Glory to God. Come and say it. He has made me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He has made me rich and wealthy. Riches and wealth are in my house. Come and say this. Christ has been made unto me wisdom. I do not lack counsel. I do not lack wisdom. I know what to do. I know how to do it. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. He has made me. Glory to God. Say this, there's joy on the inside. Ma, 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 ma. There's light on the inside. Glory to God. Shout it, joy is here. Glory to God. Glory. I feel like having a Holy Ghost party. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> uh, now, if you know me, you know I'm probably one of the calmest you'll ever see, the most introverted you'll ever see. But just get me some, some Holy Ghost smoke. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Sit down for a bit. Glory to God. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He has made me. I am becoming. You believe it? Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 2, 
Glory to God. We're teaching on the mercy of God. Ephesians chapter 2, and our core text um, is in verse 4, but to give us context, oh, that's nice, core text, context. I always wanted to be a preacher, just that it never flows. You know preachers, oh, look at that. I just loved it with all of my heart. Our core text, to give us context. I tried it once, Emmanuel. By the time I was done, I had to take Panadol. I learned to let every man abide in his calling. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can never be the best being a copy. Never. <laughs> mm -mm. It's not possible. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses. It says, You were dead, 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 <laughs> dead. You know the meaning of dead? Dead. They, ha they are driving, a, uh, what, uh, what's the brand, the cars, Lamborghini, whatever it is, dead. They are having concerts, packing out the arenas in the United Kingdom, dead. And somebody says, that's my mentor. <laughs> what a shame on the believer. What is the living finding amongst the dead? <laughs> it says, you had it quickened who were dead. Say with me, dead. That's the state of the unbeliever. That's why we've got to preach the gospel. We can't be quiet. They're dead. There's not... Is there, do, you, do you envy anything about the dead? It's a shame that the believer, because he's walking on the streets and some other fellow is driving some beautiful car, begins to compare himself with them. Himself with them. Dead. That's what the Bible says. Dead with mascara and wig. Dead. Lace wig, human wig, dead. Edge control, dead. <laughs> yeah, I know those things. I have a wife and I have a daughter. <laughs> Glory to God. It says, and you had it quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. <laughs> Wherein in time past you walked according to the curse of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh, in the children of disobedience, there's a spirit at work in them. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation. When you see the word conversation there, it talks about our lifestyle. It's not talking about um, speaking English one to another. Our lifestyle. It says, we all had our conversation, our lifestyle in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by what? Nature. By, by what? Nature. By nature. Another way to put it is by destiny. A sealed destiny. Your nature is your sealed destiny. You know, a lot of people are trying to tamper with their nature now. Was it yesterday or two days ago? I saw something somewhere, and the lady said she's a dog. She likes to act like a dog. So she puts a leash on her, her neck, and then she has two trainers. Oh, my shoe. And she's, she's proud about it. She comes out to say, um, I, I believe by nature I'm a dog. I'm not, I'm not a woman. I'm not a man. I'm not human. And so she does that. She, she wears this thing. Just I said, dear Jesus. He was like a minister who said, um, his daughter came back from school one day and was talking about somebody, um, um, whatever name we can give the person, Lindus. Let's call the person Lindus. He said Lindus in class and all the rest. And he was just enjoying the conversation, trying to know, okay, who are the people you relate with? And then he goes, you know, um, shame said. So the reverend said to me, he said, he asked her, repeat what you said. He said, shame said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he asked her, what do you mean? Oh, he, 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 she's not a he or a, a she, she's a shame. And the doctor was already buying the idea. He said he removed that from the school the next day. <laughs> A lot of people trying to tamper with what God has done. He says, who were by nature? So me by nature. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> wow. 
Mm. Glory to God. Angels are all around here. A song with the growth that just got healed now. There's a growth, um, the lower um, left quadrant of the, the abdomen there. There's something around there that just got healed now. Glory to God. Go ahead, check it. You're healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift your hands and bless him. Give him praise. The glory of the Lord is in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we bless you. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise for your love, your grace, your kindness, your goodness. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Soraman veligos keira afronshla athe di gusta andre digos po previla anta kago bababradia to nonze seila atoshida. Lord, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For I'm writing a new story with your life, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Writing a beautiful story with your life, saith the Lord. This is not the end. No, this is not your best. No, 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 no. The same hand that wrote in the palace of the king, the Gentile king, that same hand is writing on the slate of your life. Amen. Writing a beautiful story, saith the Spirit of the Lord. And yea, you shall look back and know of the truth. This is not by might, it is not by power. You shall look back and know of the truth. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. You will know of the truth that I have shown you mercy, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Now rejoice, saith the Lord, and take... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And keep grief and sadness and sorrow far from you, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Rejoice in what I have said. Rejoice in what I am doing. Rejoice in what I have shown you. For in just a short while, you will stand in the fulfillment of every word, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's respond all right by lifting our two hands and saying, The Lord is good, the Lord is good. and His mercy is endured forever. Come on, shout it again. The Lord is good, and His mercy is endured forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. How many of you are full already? Just, just full, just full. <laughs> Glory to God. Yep, thank you, Lord. Young man, I thought you wanted to play so I can enter spirit more. Okay, thank you. I've finished spirit. Sit down. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. They sabotaged you. Sorry. Ephesians 2, we were reading. It says that you were by nature children of what? Come on, talk to me. Children of what? Wrath. Remember in Romans chapter 9, we don't have the time to go into that. Romans chapter 9, I showed you how that he's made us vessels of mercy. You remember that? He's made us what? Vessels of mercy. And it's the same word here, vessels of wrath, vessels of mercy. It says even as others, which means destined for mercy. The essence of the cross was to give God the legal grounds to indiscriminately show you mercy. Are you following what I'm saying here? The essence of the cross, the death, the burial of Jesus Christ, is to give God the legal grounds to indiscriminately show you mercy. Remember, we defined mercy as God's eternal disposition to do you good. His press the compulsion of the Father to do you good. Glory to God. Are you still here? So God, and you've got to understand it this way. If um, the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was not for sin, a sin. You've got to understand it. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was not for a sin. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was not for fornication or stealing. Hey, come on, stay with me. You've got to understand what I'm saying. He wasn't for fornication or for stealing. He wasn't for that. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was for the sin nature. There's a difference. Jesus did not die on the cross because you were a thief. No. He didn't die on the cross because um, um, you're dealing with this issue or that issue. That's not the reason. No. 
He died on the cross because you were by nature a sinner. There's a difference. Now, when you understand it, can you stand up just, just for a moment? Let's imagine that sin is like a stain on the cloth. If Jesus died on the cross just so that this sin, this stain on the cloth here can be dealt with, it means that if God would show mercy in any other area, it becomes illegitimate and unjust. So Jesus did not die to cleanse, hear this, you've got to understand this. You know, many times we, we think of the blood of Jesus Christ like jik. <laughs> and if you went to Sunday school in Nigeria, you know what I'm saying. The blood of Jesus is jik. So, walk and wash away my sins. And what you're thinking of is jik. <laughs> ah, there you go, yeah, now I'm white as snow. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that Joshua, the high priest, his body was being contested for, stood before the Lord, and then the adversary, the enemy, came in contest against him and said to him, to the Lord, he said he's wearing a garment of iniquity. Now, observe that scripture in Zechariah. The Bible never says that God said, clean his garment. What did God say? Change his garment. In essence, God is not cleaning a spot. He's changing the garment. There's a difference. Yes, so the dead on Jesus on the cross is not to help you. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Ah, Fola, you can lie. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is helping her clean the lying parts. Mm. Mm. There's still small there. Mm. Mm. See what the Lord has done. <laughs> no, no. He's not trying to wash off a spot. Because our problem was not a spot. Our problem was that by nature we're children of wrath connected with Satan. That's why he says, what relationship or fellowship does light have to do with darkness? He calls the believer light. He calls the unbeliever darkness. Do you see that? Now, so when Jesus died on the cross, he changed the garment to the end that the provision of Jesus on the cross is more than able, more than sufficient for wherever we find ourselves. It's not something that he has to make an extra supply. It's already an abundant supply. Which means God will always be just to show you mercy. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Please sit down for a bit. Because when we're talking about the mercy of God, we're not talking about God just indiscriminately. No. We're saying that the moment you receive Jesus into your heart, you have come into an arena of life where it is legal and just for God to show you mercy in ways that people think is unfair. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Everybody look at me. Until people are saying your life is not fair, you have not started working in mercy. No, you have not. Which means God is going to show you mercy in such a way, people will say, who does she know? This girl is not even as good as the rest of us. And then you know when they tell you that, you know what you're going to say. It is not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it. But it is of God who show it. Mercy. Hallelujah. Are you still here? So by the death of Jesus on the cross, he... he Puts us in that arena. That's why he calls us vessels of mercy. We are, we are destined to be carriers of mercy. That's what he says in Romans the 9th chapter. All right, Romans chapter 9. Mm. Now, the challenge is that the church of Jesus Christ, when we hear mercy, all we are thinking about is sin. And we are thinking of weakness. You know, when so, if somebody says, oh God, show me mercy, what do you immediately think in your heart? Well, that's a weak person. You know, it's, that's, that's a weak person, you know, and all this. Because if you're strong, then mercy is not for the brave, it's not for the strong. Uh, you will soon find out. <laughs> you know what I've learned about life is that you either, you know, it says every knee shall bow. <laughs> either you bow by choice or you buy by Shege Pro Max. You can understand? You will bow. 
Every knee will bow. You see, anybody can, you know, um, come up with whatever story they want to tell, say of themselves and all the rest. But I'm telling you something. It's just a matter of time. You're going to be faced with situations and places where the only thing you can cry out for is mercy. That's the only thing. You've done all that you know to do. And that's not to say you shouldn't do what you know to do. You've done all that you know to do. And I found something out. You don't have to wait till you are put in such situations. But the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. That's the sacrifice of God. That's what he pours mercy on. Are you still here? Mm. Romans chapter 9. And I'm taking the time here so that you have a proper theological basis for what you have believed. It's a sorry situation that we have a lot of cherry picking right now going on in the body of Christ. Now, if you know me, if you've listened to me long enough, you know that I fully, um, what's the word now? I am grateful for what the Lord is doing. I've always said that God would always find a way to get his work done. Always. But there's a lot of cherry picking going on, people not being established in the truth. Um, and um, as long as we can say certain things and act in certain ways, we, 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 we're, we're okay. The essence of Christianity is DIY. Do it yourself. That's the essence of Christianity. Okay, let me give you some examples. Um, Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He says, no man eat fruit of him hereafter. You remember the story, right? Now, and if you read that story very well, Jesus said, no man eat fruit of him. He was so upset. He was looking. Peter, give me a stick. <laughs> he didn't find. He said, what? How can you be so green and there's nothing on you? No man eat fruit of you hereafter. And he left. The next day, chances are that Jesus was not looking at the tree to check if it had dried up. Because it was Peter that pointed his attention to it. He was just walking past. And you know, I, I can imagine that Jesus had some swag. Do you get what I'm saying here? He was just walking by, you know, and all the rest, <laughs> you know. And the fig tree. And I'm sure Peter was turning to Nathaniel and to the other guys. Be watching him. You do as if he didn't see it now. This guy just likes to be showing himself. And as he walked past, he said, didn't I tell you people? He said, all of you what? Oga! You know, master means Oga. The fig tree that thou causes, almost as though he's reminding Jesus. He's trying up from the roots. You know what Jesus said? Oh, boy. So nevele kwatenengush. That comes with a lot of consecration and depth. <laughs> Who did Jesus say? He said, hey, Peter, hey, Peter. You know, Jesus said, Peter looked at Jesus and he was shocked. He said, hey, Jesus. You know what Jesus said? Hey, Peter. You don't have to be shocked. You can do the same thing. He said, whosoever. It's whosoever. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. He didn't make it seem like it was a big deal. No, it's whosoever. It's DIY. You can speak to fig trees. It's DIY. Come on now. You can speak to cancers. It's DIY. And can I tell you something? The last revival before the return of Jesus, and yes, the Lord is returning soon. I've had encounters with the Lord, and usually we won't talk about them, so your faith is in the word of God, but I can tell you for free, he's returning soon. Somebody says, let me marry first. I don't know if you... <laughs> Ah, no, I must marry first. I was let me jack up first. It's better customs, or is it immigration from UK to heaven is better than from Nigeria. <laughs> you know, because it might be that the Nigerian angels too have been affected. <laughs> Glory to God. But the Lord is returning soon. Are you following what I'm saying here? Really soon. Really soon. And the last day revival, Sylvester, that the Lord is doing in his body is raising believers to maturity for themselves. It's a body revival, not a stage revival. Mark my words. The last revival that we around the coming of the Lord Jesus is a body revival, not a stage revival. Glory to God. You still here? Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, so let's turn back to the scriptures. Verse 22 of Romans chapter 9. He says, What if God willing to show his wrath and to make known his power, 
his power known, endured with much suffering the vessels of wrath fitted, made ready. Do you see that? To what? Destruction. He says, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the what? Vessels of mercy. Say with me, I'm a vessel of mercy. This is important. He says, which he had afore prepared unto glory. He had afore prepared unto glory. He says, he wants to make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared. All right? Unto what? Glory. All right? So mercy, let's get back to our definitions again is um, God's disposition. I said to you the best way to define mercy is to find out how it's used in scriptures. It's always used as bowels of mercy. That's deep within. The press to push something out, to use the convenience, the bowels of mercy, and all of that. He, so he uses that word to describe mercy. God is pressed to do you good. Are you following what I'm saying here? Even if that means suspending protocols and suspending principles. I'll show you in scripture. Yep. Esther was not supposed to stand before the king, but for mercy. Are you following what I'm saying here? He will suspend protocols if need be just to get his job done in your life. Hallelujah. Now you go back to Ephesians 2 verse 4 and that's where we get our theme um, from. He says, but God Let's go back there. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4. Mm. Glory, 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 glory. Well, to help us again, go back to verse 3. Let's give it context. Want to go with a loud voice? Let's read together. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others, verse 4, want to go. But, just a second. It says, this was our story until God showed up. Hallelujah. Say with me, but God. My life was this way, but God. <laughs> it says, but God, who is what? Rich. Say with me, rich. Super abundant in mercy. If you touch God, his mercy you will find. And you get what I'm saying here? He's, have you heard of people say that this land is rich in oil? This land is rich in this? This land is rich in that? He says, but God who is what? Rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. He says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith, wherewith he loved us. So when God wants to change our story, he introduces mercy. Now, mercy is not just about sin. This is where we're going to this morning. The church of Jesus Christ, for the most part, has been taught the word from the negative. So you are taught faith, and the way you're taught faith is to think that faith helps you get what you don't have. And that sounds beautiful, but that's not exactly accurate. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, it says that the communication, the use, the deployment of your faith may become effective, producing results, effectual, um, it says, by the acknowledgement of every good thing that's already in you, your faith produces results, not because it's trying to get something, it's because it acknowledges that that thing is already with you. He has made you, now you're becoming. You see that? And if, we're not, if we're not careful, there's a teaching that always comes from the negative. Always from the negative. It's the same thing with mercy. You've got to understand this. That if mercy were about sin, then we don't need a high priest. Okay. You know why that's the case? Because he has offered up the sacrifice once and for all for sin. Okay. Romans. So let's, let's look at this here. Oh, oh, oh. Are you being blessed this morning? Look at um, very quickly Hebrews, pardon me, chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. And verse 24. I want us to see this here. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24. You know why they needed the high priest in the Old Testament? Because the sins had to be atoned for yearly. That was the reason. In essence, if I take away the yearly atonement of sins, then there is no need for, a, for an office because it becomes obsolete. Are you still with me here? 
Which meant, if you said you were the high priest, we understand that, yes, we need a high priest. You know why? Because every year, somebody had to go into the holies of all. The Levites could not go inside. The priests could not go inside. He had to be the high priest. What makes you a high priest amongst other priests is that you have access to the holiest of all to offer sacrifice for the sins of the people that other priests do not have. Are you following what I'm saying? So if we have a covenant, a sacrifice that is made once and for all for the sins of the people, it makes that office obsolete. Is somebody still getting what I'm saying here? Okay. How many of you remember growing up, you saw people with typewriter? And after a while, we did not need typists again. And then, after a while, it was computer school. <laughs> if you never went to computer school or you never heard about computer school, when you're, when you're greeting me, you, you better, you better, you better. Do you know computer school? That's how we learned computer, computer school. It's an amazing thing. I went to a private secondary school and the computers were always covered. They would lock it. It was a private secondary school. It was covered. You know, there's a generation that can't believe it. I look at my kids fiddly with iPad and phones and I'm like, dear, what was I doing at their age? It's just unbelievable. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Now, you know, there's a generation that can't imagine that, oh, that's how we lived, but that's how we lived. Yes, After a while, the typist became what? Obsolete. If you didn't upgrade, you were out of the system. Now, I hope you know very soon, many jobs are going to be obsolete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God for almighty AI. Mm. Whether you like it or not, if you don't skill up, you will fall out. Are you getting what I'm saying here? It's, and, and the reason is very simple. The need for you is gone. It's gone. Let me digress a bit. Nobody owes you anything. This whole idea of they didn't help me, they didn't help me, they didn't help me. No, let me tell you. Listen, everybody please look at me and look at me well. The world is built on selfishness. The day you come to terms with it, the better for you. We're not talking about the kingdom of God. We're talking about the world. It's built on selfishness. The day your usefulness is over, your relevance is over. You can't maintain your relevance by sentimentalism. You can't use sentiments and emotions. I was there for them. Are you there now? <laughs> the earlier you settle it, the better or else you'll be you're offended in people, angry with people and all the rest. Joshua chapter 1, the last two verses, Joshua came to the people and said, God told me to lead you into the land of promise. They said, okay, no problem. Did you hear God? All right, God told you. Uh, you people remember, it, it looks like Moses too told us before he died. So they called a meeting with Joshua. They said, Joshua, lead us. As Joshua was saying, he was, yeah, thank you, my people, all my constituents, and all the rest. They called him back. They said, only let your God be with you as he was with Moses. That was the warning they gave Joshua. According as we have hacking unto Moses in all things, so we will hack in unto the only. We are not asking for mucho. No. You say we should jump. We we'll jump. We should run. We will run. Ah. Joshua, anything. All of you, you agree? Ah, yes. Anything. Only. The day we think that the Lord your God is not with you. The one that you said you heard God does not matter. Or the one that Moses told us to follow you does not matter. Mm. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? And yeah. here lies the problem. Sometimes you have to reinvent yourself to remain relevant. Okay. We're teaching on mercy. Let's stay on mercy. But that's a word for somebody here. I'm just angry. You see, I will never, never, never open up my heart to anybody. Like, <laughs> Let me tell you something here. Let me tell you something. Um, emotions are powerful. They are very powerful. But they can drive you into a ditch so easily. Do you realize that the very things that hurt you is what God will use to heal you? Somebody says, I was hurt in a relationship. I hope you know it's a relationship God will use to heal you. 
I was hurt in a church. It's a church God will use to heal you. I was hurt by this boss. It's another boss God will use to heal you. Are you still here? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, you people are saying, hmm, hmm. Why are you saying, hmm? Well, well, what's, what's the hmm? What did you hear? It's a lot. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you still here? Mm. So let's go back to <laughs> where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Remind me. Talk to me. Huh? The high priest. Yes. Yes. So. His ministry and his job is obsolete. Hebrews chapter 9. Let's look at that. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. How many of you agree that the word of God is beautiful? Oh, dear. You, you're, you're eating the word and you're like, dear God, dear God, dear God. Sometimes I'm just doing it and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh. Whew. Look at this here. I, I mean, if, you're not, if you're not feeling that way, you've been eating the wrong thing. You know why? Because taste is acquired. Oh, yeah, taste is acquired. Nobody was born with taste. Taste is acquired. Do you know if you eat Chinese food now, the real, not the one they are selling for you, the real. <laughs> <laughs> this one is Nigerianized. The real Chinese food. You almost puke. You're like, what is this? I remember one time they said something before my wife and I, and Pastor Dela is a lot more adventurous than me. I'm like, God. The same yesterday, today, and forever. It's what I ate at 7, I'll eat at 12, I'll eat at 7 p.m. again. But my wife just can't understand why, for goodness gracious, with the variety and the spice of life, dear God, if I'm eating at one restaurant, that's where I'll eat for the next 10 years. If, I mean, I'm a routine person. But after the second time, she's like, uh-uh, we are going here again. <laughs> you know, I've had things said before me, I said, dear God, and somebody's going to eat this. Yet you see people eating it. Do you know the people who will eat your pepper soup or whatever it is, and they almost die? Yet those kids never had a sense of taste. It is after eating and eating and eating, they developed taste. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, so if you find out that you're not excited at God's word, the word of God does not stir you up and all the rest, then you've been eating the wrong thing. You have. Expose yourself to the word continually, and it's a matter of time. Yes, glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. It says, for Christ is not entered. You know why I like Petra, Lagos? Uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. We are life. Oh, dear. I love, I love Petra. Do you get what I'm saying? I love them. Now, I know you're going to, going, to, going to go and tell them. But you know, you know why I, I, I love it? Is, um, I can preach for six hours. It's not two services. Because after the first service, they are looking at me. Uh, uh, I just told you what I'm going to do, all right? <laughs> just kidding there. He says, for Christ, now please follow the thought here. For Christ is not entered the holy places made with hands. The same way Aaron would, Aaron would go into the holy place. He says, Christ has not entered holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, which means what Aaron went into is a figure of what Christ was going into. He says, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. My God. Look at the next verse there, verse 25. He says, nor yet that he should offer himself often. Come on. Come on. He's not going to have to do this over and over and over again. It's not often. He says, as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of orders, this is what made the office a legitimate office. The need to go every year. Look at this year. Next verse, 26. He says, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Everybody read that last sentence. Powerful. Mm. Mm. Ah, ah! Do you observe? He didn't say put away sins. Sin, the nature of sin, to put away sin. He says once, so we once. once. Now, if he appeared once to put it away, why then is he still the high priest? Look at the next verse there. 
you, you, this will bless you. Everybody read. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this what? Judgment. That tells you immediately that the high priestly ministry of Jesus over the believer is far more than just a sin issue. It's far more than just a sin issue. Sin is included, but that's not all. Which means the high priestly ministry of Aaron over Israel was completely different from the high priestly ministry of Jesus over the believer. Hey, 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 did he not tell us that Christ did not come in the order of Aaron? He came in the order of Melchizedek. Can I ask you a question? When Melchizedek showed up before Abraham, was there any sin question there? Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. Did he bring a sacrifice to say, Abraham, you've sinned. Let's get your sins atoned before God. No, he brought bread and wine. Tokens of fellowship. You already accepted. Sin is not a question. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Now, so our high priest is not primarily about sin. No. No. So if we think that mercy in the office of the high priest is because we sin today, we sin tomorrow, then we are missing out on the effects of mercy. Say this to me, I have a high priest. Hmm. Say again, I have a high priest. Are you getting anything today? Please sit down for a bit. It says, God has given us a high priest in the person of Jesus. Hmm. Interestingly, he is high priest over the believer, not the sinner. Oh, you didn't, did you get what I just said now? He's high priest over the believer. He's not high priest over the sinner. He's Messiah to the sinner. He's Savior to the sinner. He's the sacrifice for the sinner. But he's the high priest to the believer. Now, if he's high priest to the believer and not high priest to the sinner, he tells you that his job as high priest is not because on a yearly basis we need to be atoned for, we are atoned for from the past to the present to the future. That's out of the way. There's a reason he's high priest now. Say this to me, I believe in the mercy of God. I'm truly praying to God that God will grant you a revelation of his mercy. The priestly office, the high priestly ministry is the custodian of the mercy of God. The high priestly ministry is the custodian of the mercy of God. We see that the priesthood of Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek, not Aaron. Aaron's order was an order, a Levitical order of sin, dealing with sins. Melchizedek was dealing with the blessing. Dealing with the blessing. Are you still here? Now look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. And then we begin to see this high priestly ministry. And you see Paul trying to weave between what the Jewish mind, remember, don't forget, Hebrews is written to the Jews. So you are going to see a lot of Jewish uh, innuendos, a lot of Jewish mindset and culture being communicated there. But you must be able to read beyond the line to see what he's saying to the church, not just the Jews. This is important. Look at what he says here. Are you still here today? mm mm he says, seeing then that we have a great high priest. Say this, I have a great high priest. Ah, yeah, yeah. My God. He says, that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Look at the next verse. Next verse. He says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Underline that. Underline that. This explains the ministry of the high priest. The feelings of our infirmities. He says, we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched. In essence, our high priest... Is high priest to supply mercy for our infirmities. Somebody get what I'm saying here? Look at what he says. He says, but I was in all point tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Now, do you see the going in with the Jewish mindset? Because if he's writing to Jews about the high priest, he has to explain the concept of sin. Are you following what I'm saying here? But then he knows that the Gentiles, the church, will read this in time to come. And so he didn't say he was not touched by the feelings of our temptation. No. What did he say? The feelings of our infirmity. And when you study scriptures, you find out that infirmity is far bigger than sin. Far bigger. Look at what he says. He says, but was in all point tempted like as we are yet without sin. Next verse. 16. Everybody read one to go. Let us therefore come boldly 
unto the throne of grace that we may obtain oh hold on hold on hold on hold on what are we obtaining why are we obtaining mercy read the next thing read the next thing and find grace to help in the time of need do you see how he's expanding it beyond just a sin issue sin is included and he's trying to get you to see that hey sin is a, an integral part of what he's done but don't limit your heart and your mind to it chapter 5 verse 1 remember the bible was not written in chapters and verses chapter 5 verse 1 it's a continuum the thought continues everybody read this for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to god next verse that that he may offer please go back but gifts and what sacrifices for sins now look at the next thing he says in verse 2 want to go who can have compassion on the ignorance first is what sins do you see that then he says who can have compassion on what the ignorant and on them that are out of the way why for he himself also is compassed not with sins but with what infirmity do you see what i'm saying here when we talk about the high priestly ministry of jesus we are talking about him supplying the mercy of god to cover your infirmities infirmity in scripture refers to a drop from the standard a gap are you getting what i'm saying so if you use it as infirmity in terms of sin you are saying that the standard of god's righteousness and holiness do you know sickness in the body is called an infirmity yes, sir. that's why we call it a spirit of infirmity now why is it an infirmity because the body is not functioning like the standard it should be functioning yes, are you getting what i'm saying here have you ever read in romans 8 he says that the holy ghost helps us to pray and takes a hold against our what infirmities what is our infirmities there is not a bodily infirmity for we know not what to pray are you getting what i'm saying here in essence the infirmity there is a gap in knowledge i might be praying about this issue and this is not the problem yes, sir. come on now yes, sir. so when he says infirmity he's not just talking about sin Scripture shows us five areas of infirmity. Are you ready today? The scripture shows us five areas of infirmity. And this shows us five areas that you can lay hold on the mercy of God. This is important. What he has given must be laid hold on. That he has given it does not mean you will experience it. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? That's why he says, come boldly. Did you read in 1 Timothy 6, 12? He says, lay hold on eternal life. They had eternal life. These were believers. Eternal life was resident on the inside of them already. Why then did he say lay hold on eternal life? Because there's a difference between what you have received into your spirit and what you have taken advantage of. Take advantage of eternal life. Have we received mercy of God? Yes. But what does he tell us? Come boldly to the throne of grace. Come and take hold of your mercy. It's not going to happen by chance. Take hold of your mercy. They are new every morning. New every morning. It means every single day, there is a resupply of mercy into your life. Question is, are you taking hold of it? Great is thy faithfulness. Hmm. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Five areas five areas where the mercy of god covers our infirmities which means the five areas that the scripture shows us as infirmities number one as expected is sins and errors sins transgressions and errors but this is how i want to put it for you please understand what i'm saying here we're not talking here about the mercy of god that forgives no we're talking about the redemptive power of mercy which means that by reason of the mercy of God, God can take your errors past. He can take the transgressions or the mistakes or the errors, whatever it is past, and write a beautiful story out of it. Let me read you what the Lord said. He can free you. Please listen carefully to the power of mercy. If mercy is, not, if mercy is only forgiving, then we have lost on the power, out on the power of mercy. 
Mercy must go beyond being forgiven to being redemptive. Okay, let me explain it this way. How many of you, just be sincere with me. Just, I mean, it's church. Do you get what I'm saying? Just be sincere. How many of you used to steal small small when you were young? Just wave at me. Uh -huh. ah. uh -huh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding. But then, um, I mean, Oscar definitely stole when he was young. So, so just, just imagine him there, and then um, you're living in, how many of you know what they call face me, I face you compound, or a lot of you are in the compound, and then you, you did your stealing beyond your parents to go and steal in another person's house. You know, when you're stealing in your house, your mother will, if you grew up with African mothers, I mean, it was, you know what they call um, manual reset, that thing you do for phones. You know, that, that's what it was. Now, but once you carry it to your neighbor's house, you know the story changes. Now, let's imagine that you, after a while, um, you guys are in your teenage years and all the rest, and then the ogre, the man has found, he found out that you stole, even your parents went to say, ah, we are sorry, oh. you two, you went to say, I'm sorry, I said, ah, no, no, I don't have anything against Fola again, no, I don't have anything against Fola at all, at all, at all, at all, he's fine and all the rest. All of a sudden, his son starts liking Fola. <laughs> Did he forgive Fola? But that mercy was not redemptive. Which means, even though I have forgiven you, please, eh? <laughs> please stay away from my son. Many times when we are thinking of mercy in the light of sins, all we are thinking of is the forgiveness of sin. But the mercy of God is more than forgiving, it is redemptive. Which means the very thing today that you say was an error will become from where glory will come out in your life. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Please understand this. We're talking about the redemptive power of mercy. It will deliver you from the errors of sins past. Are you following what I'm saying here? And bring the glory of God out of that situation. We are not just talking about God forgiving you. We are talking about God using that very event, that very situation that should have brought you, as it were, a disadvantage, brought you shame or something like that. God will use that very situation, not another one where you feel you are strong. Is somebody get what I'm saying? And you know why he does that? That the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. Which means he will take that very same situation that you feel, hey, let's wrap this up. Hey, this, this, this is the reason why and God will use that very same thing to bring his glory out of your life. If you don't believe this, then you don't know the power of mercy. Mercy is not I freed you. Mercy is that anything you lost because of that thing, I restore, I recompense. Is somebody following what I'm saying? There is no reason under heaven why God should have brought Solomon through Bathsheba. No reason. He could have come from any other wife. No reason. It is just to tell you something. God is trying to establish something in our minds that the one I love will come from your error. You didn't hear what I said. That's the only child of David that was named by God. God sent a prophet to name the child. He said, this one is Jedidiah. He says, beloved of the Lord. Which means, more, David, you are seated here, you are thinking, this is the fruit of my error. No, this is my love and my mercy. That's why it's called the sure mercies of David. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? So we are looking beyond just a forgiveness of sins to a redemption. It is not true mercy until it is redeemed. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Number two. These are the infirmities, the five areas of infirmity shown us in Scripture. The number two there is ignorance and gaps in our knowledge. Romans 8, 26. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Please, I want you to listen very carefully. Um, I, there's, a, there's a fine balance between the humility of grace, knowing that everything you have received of the Lord is by grace, and you knowing that this is an office that God has given to you. So Paul says, um, don't lord it over God's people and others, and he will speak about humility in that, in that sense. And then he will say, magnify your office. Um, it's important you know, please listen to me. It's important you know that standing 
in my office in this house of Petra, across all of our churches, is not just me being a pastor. No. So you have to understand that the, the Lord will use what you are hearing to establish certain things in the body. You have to understand this. That there are, there are, there are radio stations that transmit for a community and there are radio stations that transmit for the world. Yes, sir. They are both radio stations. Let every man abide in his calling. That's why you may hear things that you say, wow, I never saw it in this light and all of the rest and all of the rest. Never get, a, never get to a point where you're like, you know, ah, he did bust. Oh. No. No. In fact, let me tell you something. It's called the blessing of the firstborn. We'll talk about it next week. All right. It's called the blessing of the firstborn. Romans 8, 26. Let's look at this here. <clears throat> he says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our what? Infirmities. You agree with me that there's no question of sin here. So we're not talking about infirmity as in sin. He says, help at our infirmity. So that nobody then gives an interpretation to what he has said. He then tells you what an infirmity is. He says, for, come on now. We know not what we should pray for as we ought. He did not say we don't know how to pray. No. The principles of prayer are clear. Come to the Father in the name of Jesus. Speak in other tongues. Stand on the scriptures. All of those things. But I hope you know you can have all of that and be praying amiss. Yes, sir. Oh, you didn't get what I said. You are having trouble at work and then you are praying in the name of Jesus. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Um, God will give men for my sake. Take away my boss. Take away my boss. Remove him. Uproot him. In the name of Jesus. This it will be hot from him today. From today, it will be hot. It will be hot. It will be hot. Not knowing that your boss has nothing to do with your problem. He may be the face of it, but behind it is the person beside you. Your seatmate at work. So you are praying and you are not getting the result. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Yeah. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. So what happens there? Let's, 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 let's digress a bit. What happens there is that as I begin to pray in the spirit, the Holy Ghost takes hold with me and in an unknown tongue, I begin to pray out the exact and direct counsel of God. Many times, he will give me an understanding of it. A thought will float into your heart. A vision will come to you. All of a sudden, you know that this is what I need to deal with in this situation. But if you, if you continue praying, you will stand on the principles but not get results. Somebody get what I'm saying? So he says that he helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be what? Uttered. So the second level of infirmity, there is a gap in knowledge. And this cuts across everything. A gap in knowledge. There's that gap in knowledge. There's, did you remember Hebrews 5.2, I believe? He says, who will help the ignorant and those who are out of the way? Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He will help the ignorant and those who are out of the way. A gap in knowledge. Listen, let me tell you something. here. Everybody look at me. Please look at me. Look at me. Let me tell you what God wants to do. Hmm? Let me tell you what God wants to do. He wants to bring things into your life. That is people that will come and give you an interpretation of it. You, you don't have the interpretation. Which means people will look at it and say, this is what we read about in God's generals. This is what we read about. Do you know? Do you, and as they're explaining to you, you say, well, this is what I've been working in in my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, That's the power of mercy. Which means that God's mercy can cover a gap. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, That's why it says the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong. Is somebody get what I'm saying here? Which means that when you look at yourself, I'm running, but I know I'm not the swiftest. I'm not the most eloquent. I am not, do you get what I'm saying here? You can tell for yourself that, listen, really and truly, I may not be the most qualified in this place. How, where was Jesus born? In a manger. How can a manger baby be the king of the world? What was his father's job? He was not Roman emperor or anything. He was carpenter. How can a carpenter's son be the creator? Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, so that we see that God's mercy brings glory out of the most unexpected places. Which means there's a gap there in knowledge and all of that. But the mercy of God begins to cover up for it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Let me tell you. Two things the mercy of God will do there. It will cover up for it, grant you results, manifestations, and the mercy of God will bring you that knowledge. 
Go and read Daniel chapter 2. The Bible says that they were going to kill all the wise men and all dressed. Daniel said to Ariok, why is the king so hasty about this matter? Let him calm down. Just give us some time. And then he gathered his friends together. Go and read the prayer. What he said. He said that we might seek mercies of the God of heaven. Which meant there's something we don't know. And what they sought for was mercy. Oh God, have mercy. And God showed them what they did not know. You get what I'm saying here? That's why you, you don't need to know it to be able to do it. You don't need to be, feel like I'm adequate for it. Are you following what I'm saying here? We, you lift your hand there and say, Heavenly Father, I hope in your mercy, not my skill, not my ability. You know why he does this? That the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. Are you following this here? Number three. Let me give you the five today. Maybe next week we'll extensively look into them. Are you being blessed today? What is number one there? What is number two? Number three is a lack of ability and competitive advantage. Infirmity refers to a lack of ability and competitive advantage, which means when they, they tell everybody, come and drop your proposal for the contract. You, when, <laughs> when five of you enter the room, you know you have lost. How many of you know what I'm saying here? Have you seen people going for interview with you and you're like, <laughs> let me carry your fire, please. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, when you hear, sometimes you don't even need to read. Once they just start speaking, you know, Yale, Cambridge, and you is Osu. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you for that? I mean, and all the, and now if you went to Osu, I know, I don't, I mean, in fact, one of the greatest encounters I had with God happened in a conference I went as a student in Osu. So if that's a blessing to you, do you get what I'm saying? So I have no issues with, I mean, indelibly and all this. But Yale and Osu, I'm just no, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> are you following this? So that gap there, the, the lack of ability and competitive advantage, where you know for yourself, let me tell you something. Please understand this. You, God is bringing you into a place where you will know that I could not have merited this of myself. What under heaven, what would Esther have said made her merit it? What would Esther have said? It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but what? God that showeth mercy. Second Samuel chapter 9, you study it there. David woke up one morning and said, is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I might show him the kindness of God? We looked at this last week. The kindness of God, why? Because of my friend Jonathan, for Jonathan's sake. Are you following what I'm saying here? Which means, Mephibosheth, this has nothing to do with you. It's not what you have done. Are you getting this? I remember as a young boy, a teenager, I had gone to Rajoba at the time, saved some money together, and I went to buy some Archbishop Benson that was at tapes. I can never forget that tape. Never forget that message. In fact, I can, I can almost teach it from beginning to the end. The title of the message is, Your Head is Fit for a Crown. And Archbishop was talking from 2 Samuel chapter 9 about how that first things first, no lame person, anybody who had any infirmity in their body was allowed to come into the presence of the king. David said, listen, whether or not he has an infirmity, which means he lacks the competitive advantage, are you following what I'm saying here? Because of the covenant I have with Jonathan, which means God is saying that whether or not you have that competitive advantage, that you are lame in your feet as long as there is a covenant with Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? And God is screaming out from heaven, is there anyone left of the house of Jesus that I might show him kindness, mercy for Jesus' sake? So Mephibosheth was carried, he couldn't walk. Now watch this. Men who could walk, who were able-bodied, carried the one who was not able-bodied. Are you following what I'm saying here? Which means the very thing they would have said to be the advantage, they had to use it for the work. Is somebody get what I'm saying here? Listen, is it that you believe the word of God or you believe your experiences? So you find men who could walk with chest, carry Mephibosheth that could not walk. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? And they are saying, ah, this life is not fear. Mm, mm, mm. How can somebody that cannot walk? Then they will put him on the chair. Mephibosheth will say, move me small. Move me. Move me. Uh -huh. Now, now, now. We have moved the plates. 
He will eat everything eatable on the plate. Uh, is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Guess what? When he's done, who will carry him again? Able-bodied men. Carrying him back. To, are you getting what I'm saying here? Archbishop said something, Pastor Tosi, I can never forget. He said, the moment he sits you on his table, nobody can see who is lame or who can walk. Mercy is the leveler. Which means once mercy enters into this operation, it's almost nobody can look at anybody around that boardroom. Nobody can look into those things and say, ah, this one cannot work. No! Once mercy enters, it levels the equation. I may not come from the kind of home they came from. I may not have the exposure and the connections they have, but I have mercy. Somebody follow what I'm saying? Somebody shout it, mercy is the leveler. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. So never again do you say, I wish this person were my father. I wish I knew this person. I wish, I wish. Never again. Like David, you say, Lord, I hope in your mess. I hope in your mess. That's the power of the mercy of God. I say this by the spirit of the Lord. Before this week is over, many of you will be carried into rooms that you have no, no skill, no merit, none for by yourself, you will know this is purely the mercy of God. I'm decreeing that these doors are open unto you in the name of Jesus. Shout it, oh Lord, I hope in your mercy. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Here? Please sit down for a bit. So you get this now. And when we're talking about the mercy of God, we're talking about heavy substance. It's not um, a weakling thing. No. This thing rewrites stories. Hmm. Are you still here? I'm telling you what I'm seeing by the Spirit. I'm seeing men sitting around tables they have no qualifications for. I'm telling you what I'm seeing by the Spirit. I know when the anointing of the Holy Ghost is on me in that measure. I'm telling you what I'm seeing by the Spirit, that men are going to sit around tables that they have no personal qualification for. You will know that, listen, I enter this place, it's not by might, it's not by power, this is purely the mercy of God. Purely the mercy of God. Glory to God. Now somebody says, are you saying then that, oh, we should just be hoping? Now, observe what he said. He said, it's not him that will it, nor him that run it. God did not say you should not will. God did not say you should not run. He's only saying that after you have finished running, I'm now going to apply my mercy in such measure that you will say, I ran, no, I ran. I always say this, that when you are telling the story of your life, if it is really God, you will say, you know, I started this way, then I thought I should take this exam, then I took a 40-day fast, then I sowed this seed, then I did this, but, see, at a point, you will get to a point in that story where you say, but I, I can't tell how this happened, though. this was the hand of God. Now, talk to me. Jo Joseph says, I had a dream. Then I had another dream. And then the next day, I found myself in the pit. Next in Potiphar, next in prison. I, I didn't even know how all of these things was going on. All of a sudden, tell me what he did that, that qualified him to be prime minister. Show me mercy. Mercy of God. I believe in this thing with all of my heart. Number four. I'll give you number four and number five and then we close this morning. I believe that something has been delivered into your spirit. I believe something has been delivered into your spirit this morning. Hmm. Hmm. Everything has changed. Ay, 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 ay. Everything has changed. I stand in the fullness of my office and I say to you, everything has changed. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. Soramande Kligusta Pradijla Akte. Let every walls that have contained you on the same level that you have gone round, round, and round, irrespective of the labor and the efforts that you have put in, every wall of containment, right now I command you to come crumbling in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, you will return with results that the human mind will find difficult to believe. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please listen to me. The word edifies. 
the prophetic utterance launch. Do you understand what I'm saying? The teaching of the word will edify you. Prophetic utterance will launch you into those things. So you have to understand how to receive both of them. Receive the word, be edified, and your faith is strengthened by what you're hearing. But then there's the place of prophetic utterance to launch you into the fullness of what God has for you. I see this clearly, like I'm seeing you. Walls of containment are coming down. Walls of containment are coming down. I said walls of containment are coming down. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now, in one minute, with a loud voice, pray out in the Holy Ghost. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. Shabbat
myself into something. Yeah, there's something I've been believing the Lord for. I just danced myself into it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Number four, weakness in resolution and conviction. We'll talk about it next week. Weakness in resolution and conviction. I believe, help down my own belief. Weakness in resolution and conviction. You're not even sure if I'm believing, if I'm not believing. And it's not as though you're not trying. Have you ever been there before? And then when you hear people teach faith, it almost makes you feel sad. Wondering, but I'm doing all that I know to do. Is there no other provision in God? If we miss the technicalities of faith, is God such a legalistic God? Can he, can he deliver us from the legalism of the law and bring us to the legalism of faith? A million times no. A million times no. Number five, physical infirmities. There are sicknesses in your body. Philippians 2.27 talks about that. Paul saying that God had mercy upon Epaphras, Epaphroditus, pardon me. He says he had mercy upon him. He was sick and nigh unto death. God had mercy upon him. And then God had mercy upon me. Kosela and the ligo shanamandia. Sinamande le borodo sanamande brede gebala kashalabaya. La sota kabaya la bada mashate geborodo. Sinamana mana 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 baya. Ela katuna maya na mana vera to kusida bakatele mukunde bredi gala hashela baya. Sira bala bara na mashala kabara na bakatala bakara bara na mashala na na bate. Oh yes, na rekele jerebi. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. Have you been blessed this morning? I think you have enough material to go and chew on for the week. You will return with your testimonies. Please lift those two hands towards heaven. Lord, let light, according to what has been taught, let light break forth in every heart. You will not just have heard good word. Light will enter your heart. You will return with results of that superhuman word of God. You will return and we will know this is purely the hand of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a big shout. Give the Lord a big clap. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you will, you will do me a favor. You are not going to come alone next week Sunday. We are cooking a feast here. <laughs> Glory to God. We are cooking a feast a feast it will be very unfair that you have people in your circle that you are not bringing with you glory to God so next week Sunday every one of us will making up a making our minds commitment to bring as many as we can so that they can be a part of this feast glory to God are you happy come on give the Lord a shout of praise again Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Say, mercy is rewriting my story. Come on, say that mercy is rewriting my story. Hallelujah. You can have a seat. God bless you. Praise the Lord. What a service. Hallelujah. My life is changed forever. Glory to God. Is your life changed? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. 
it's time to give our tithes and our offerings. We're going to start with the tithe. Petra believes the giving of the tithe is our first, foremost, and foundational way to honor God in and with our finances. If you're here this morning and you would like to give your tithe or you made a transfer during the week, please rise as we say a prayer over our tithe. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, Bring one-tenth of your income into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, say, in this way, says the Lord of armies. See if I won't open the windows of heaven for you and flood you with blessings. Let's take this prayer together. Say, Father, I stand here before you in acknowledgement of your blessing upon my life. I return to say, I have prospered and increased only because you have blessed me. Now I bring my seed to you as an act of honor and of faith. I ask that there be an outpouring of rain upon the work from which I have brought you this tithe in honor of your name. I declare that the heavens are open over me and you grant me divine insights, concepts, and ideas this week and that a clear distinction be upon the works of my hands. In Jesus' name, amen. You can give your tithes. Let's join them. Let's rise to give our offerings. Let us all rise to give our offerings. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Say what a prayer over your offering. Say what a prayer over your offering. Thank the Lord for the privilege of giving. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for you would make all grace abound toward us. We enjoy your sufficiency and abound unto every good work in Jesus name. Amen. You can have your seats. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do listen to the following announcements. Join our daily watchman prayer hour with Pastor Ayo Ajani, God's servant. And this week, the theme of this week's watchman prayer hour is fire on my altar. Praise God. Fire on my altar. And God's servant will be personally taking the watchman prayer hour this week. So don't only be, thank you, don't only be at the watchman prayer hour, ensure that you invite others. Praise God. You get the flyers, put them on your status, put it everywhere, spread the word. Praise God, fire on my altar. This week, you were born. Praise God, you were born this week. There will be fire on your altar this week. Praise God. So invite as many as you know, 6 a.m., West African time, Mondays to Friday. Join us on MixLR at Petra Christian Center. And also follow us on Instagram at Watchman Prayer Hour. So if you do not have MixLR, download MixLR and join the Watchman Prayer Hour. If you're not a partner, I'm inviting you to be a partner with God's servant today. Praise God. God's servant, God has sent his servant, Pastor Ayo journey as an apostle to the body of Christ. You know, when I see God's servant, and I, I want you to see pastor that same way. God did not send his servant here just to come and pastor. He just relocated him to come and pastor. Uh -uh. Pastor is talking to the body of Christ from here. Are you following me? He's talking to the whole of the body of Christ, the whole world from here. And it is a privilege for us to join hands together with God's servant to reach the ends of the earth. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So as responsible children of God in God's house, we are joining hands with God's servant to take that message with our finances. Amen. So we are not calling on prayer partners. Yes, we know they are prayer partners. We are calling on financial partners. I told you last week, the message of the gospel, the gospel is free, but the gospel is not cheap. We have planted churches in several places as a result of partnership. God's servant has had conferences as a result of our partners. So if you're not a partner today, 
ensure you be a partner, ensure you become a partner. And, you know, as a partner, you are a partaker of the same grace that is on God's servant. Hallelujah. So be a partner to them. If you're already a partner, I encourage you to continue and take it up a notch. To become a partner, visit www.iorjourney.com slash partnership to sign up. After signing up, you will receive a unique partner code via email. This partner code gives you your access, gives you access to your partnership dashboard where you can see all of your givings depending on the frequency selected when signing up. It's a very easy procedure. Praise the Lord. Global Midweek Service is on Wednesday by 6 a.m. West African time. You can join us from any part of the world and follow on all our streaming platforms. Kindle Accra, hallelujah. 5th and 6th of April, Kindle Accra. So if you know people in, in Ghana, invite them to Kindle Accra. God's servant is coming to the city of Accra. Hallelujah. Further details will be communicated. If you are worshiping with us for the first time here at Petra Christian Center, we would like to welcome you very, very, very specially. Can you please signify by raising up your hand if this is your first time? Oh, I can see that hand. I can see that hand. Welcome them. Welcome them to church. If you're around them, welcome them to church. You are welcome. You are welcome. You're very welcome. Can you can you please rise? Can you please rise? I want to see you very well. Just rise. Please rise. Please rise. Wow. Oh my God. You are so very welcome. On behalf of God's servant, Pastor Ayo Ajani, I welcome you very specially to our midst. If you look behind, there is a lady behind with a prop. Just Take your Bibles, your bags, everything that you came to church with, and please meet her behind. We have a warm reception for you. Please clap for them, clap for them. Thank you so very much. God bless you. We have come to the coolest part of the service. It's time to give our mantra. Shall we rise to give our mantra? Hallelujah. Workers, we have a special meeting with God's servant next week, Sunday, 8 a.m. Every worker, 8 a.m., special workers meeting with God's servant. I am Petra. I am built solid on the rock of the word that never fails. I am Petra. My faith is active and produces great results. I am Petra. My hopes are fadeless for I dream new dreams every day. I am Petra. I am an extension of the love and character of Jesus to my world. Slap your never high five and say, I am Petro. God bless you. Have a week filled with God's mercy. Thank you.